Happy Palm Sunday! Well, I had not been really happy on palm, previous Palm Sundays because I knew people welcomed Jesus on the one hand, but soon they turned their back and they shouted, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! So I didn't like that uh, during the uh, Passion Week. So right before the Passion Week, even though people were excited about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, I was not so much too much happy. However, today, after reading Luke chapter 19 again, I started to be really happy for Jesus coming into town, into Jerusalem, into my life and our lives. There are two incidents before uh, Jesus coming into Jerusalem before a so-called Palm Sunday Parade. The first one, the first incident was about uh, Zacchaeus. He was known as a sinful man. He was a, a tax collector and many people didn't like him. He had some spiritual hunger when Jesus was approaching to his town Jericho, Zacchaeus was curious, hmm, who is this man? And he really wanted to see the Messiah, but he did not know, he wasn't sure. But when Jesus told him, Zacchaeus, come down, I will stay at your house tonight. And then Zacchaeus eventually found who Jesus was. When Jesus said, Today, salvation has come to this house. For I have come to save the lost. The Son of Man came to seek and seek. The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And then, Zacchaeus and some people started to see who he was. Jesus is the Son of Man. Jesus is the Messiah. That was the first story. The second story is this. Jesus told a parable to people there in Jericho. A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then return. He called ten of his servants gave them ten minutes and said, put this money to work until I come back. But some servants didn't like him and disobeyed him. Later, the nobleman became a king and then he returned. To the faithful, he gave what they had earned. And to the unfaithful, he gave them what they deserved, according to their negative words and passive deeds. So the nobleman said, I will use your own words to condemn you. You said that I am a hard man and I even uh, take money I didn't earn and gather food I didn't grow. If that's the truth, you should have put my money in the bank. Then when I came back, my money would have earned some interest. People who use what they have will get more. But those who do not use what they have will have everything taken away from them. In this parable, Jesus clearly disclosed himself as the king and the judge. And also he talked about his return. Until his return, we also are asked to use our minas, our resources, talents, uh, our belongings, and our lives for God's work. Today's Bible says, uh, Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After Jesus had said this, Jesus had said uh, two stories that I mentioned. 
he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If one asks you, Why are you untying it? Say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the cord, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the cord? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their clothes on the cord, and then uh, put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their clothes on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, leave your your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. In this story, Jesus' disciples were amazed because what Jesus said was exactly uh, happened. Wow! At the time, Jesus didn't have the cell phone. But how come he could know what uh, the, the, the owner of the, uh, the court uh, would ask? So, the disciples were uh, pleasantly surprised. And then, most of all, there was another wonderful uh, amazement. They were deeply spiritually surprised because the prophecy about the Messiah which was the prophecy said about 540 years ago through the mouth of prophet Zechariah that prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus rode on a donkey coming into Jerusalem as the king. So, it was a great surprise and amazement for the uh, spiritual disciples. So, in this story, we can find that Jesus is the Messiah and also the prophecy about him was fulfilled and prophecy about him is fulfilled and will be fulfilled. Jesus said, I will be with you until the end of the age. He is with us now. And he will return. He will come back. And his prophecy will be fulfilled. So, because of the two incidents, I can understand uh, Palm Sunday prayed more clearly. I know who Jesus is and what we can do in this story. During this uh, coronavirus pandemic, people ask, when will this affliction be over? Some experts say, when vaccine is developed and distributed, then it will be over. So, I'd love to pray for the fast development and distribution of the medicine. On the other hand, in the reality of our uh, fear and death, I have other questions. How fragile and unwise and unprepared uh, human beings are. How long will people suffer from uncontrollable sicknesses, job losses, hunger, and homelessnesses? 
To whom can we return in this tough time? When will the Messiah come to save us? Thankfully, today's scripture, including Luke chapter 19, whole chapter, Jesus gives us a clear message. Jesus is the Savior. He is the King. He is the Judge. He is the Messiah. And He will return in His time, in God's time. Until then, let us use our talents, minas, uh, what, whatever we have been uh, given, and let's work for tasks that God has given us. John Wesley understood that. And he has given us many practical uh, instructions. I can share with you just two today. The first one, he said, Seek God first. I'm quoting him. In using all means, seek God alone. Look only to the power of His Spirit and the merits of His Son. Beware you do not get stuck in the work itself. If you do, it is all lost labor. Nothing short of God can satisfy your soul. Therefore, fix on Him in all, through all, and above all. We are seeking vaccine. So bad. But as much as we seek the vaccine, let's seek God first and more than anything else because He made us. He is with us. He has the power to give us life on earth and also in the coming world. Number two, to Christ. Let's lead people to be saved as much as we can. John Wesley said, You have nothing to do but to save souls. Therefore, spend and be spent in this work and go always, not only to those that want you, but to those that want you most. Go to the people whom you love. Not only that, go to the people who need you most. John said, It is your business to save as many souls as you can, to bring as many sinners as you possibly can to repentance, and with all your power to build them up in that holiness without which they cannot see the Lord. That's what we can do. So let's praise the Lord Christ most of all in this Palm Sunday and for the rest of our lives. And then let's prepare for His return. As we seek Him first, use our possessions and minas and talents, and let's strive to love and save others. Thanks be to God. Hosanna. Amen.